Hello everyone, welcome back to Larry's Furries, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So, this week we're making a small adjustment. We're, do we're doing our Larry's Furries on Tuesday rather than, w rather than Wednesday or later in the week, basically because of the, uh, the testing schedule we ha that we have uh, planned for, for, later for this whole week. And for, for our Larry's Furries today, I'd like first to talk about another adjustment that some guys, some of you might have to make in your summer plans. So, some of you will, ha will have somewhat, someone like an older sibling available to, a t to a take you to various uh, places that might, that might prove to be educational experiences during the summer. But, th but this person might not have access to a car because the, some of your families might, might only have one vehicle and your parents might need it for work. So if, without a car, you're pretty much limited to mass transit to get around. And mass transit in, New, in northern New Jersey is good for one and only one thing, getting you into New York City. But fortunately for you, there, when you, when you take your bus into New York, you have access to a pair of very fine zoos that are right there and easily accessible from the subway. So we, ha we have the Central Park Zoo and the Bronx Zoo. The Central Park Zoo is by far the cheaper of the two. In fact, it's one of the cheapest of the zoo, of the zoos that we've looked at at all. It's, it is, of course, co coming along with that cheapness. It's a fairly small zoo, but it still has, but it still has a good animal collection. And it, and aside from that, well, once you, once you go there, you're in the middle of Central Park. So when you finish with the zoo, there's lots of other things to do. There. Plenty of other things to see and do in the park itself, and then around, you know, around the park, you're in the same neighborhood with all of the major New York City museums. So you can, so you can go, so you can go to any of those as well. <laughs> uh, the sub, so to get the, to get the to uh, Central Park Zoo by the subway. You know, once you've taken your bus to to Port Authority, you you go through the tunnels to to Times Square part of the up the station complex, take the NQR to, to Fifth Avenue station, and then that, that'll put you at the corner of the park, and, three, and the equivalent of a three-block walk through the park will get you to the zoo. The Bronx Zoo, of course, is the, much, is the biggest of all the zoos in our region, and, and to go along with that size, it's the most expensive. But, so this is very, very much a full-day full outing by itself. And priced accordingly, forty dollars for an adult, thirty for a child. Yes, I know it's expensive. The park, the parking is absorbent too, so you, I wouldn't drive in unless you're taking a whole crowd. Like, of course, Central Park doesn't doesn't have official parking. There's plenty of private garages in Manhattan, but those are gonna be just as expensive as the Bronx. So either way, subway's the way to go. And the, although the Although those admission rates are steep, there's, there are opportunities to get free tickets to visit the zoo on a Wednesday. The free, the free pass is a, is, a, is a limited category admission, so you have to pay extra for a few of the bigger exhibits, but still that's a huge savings worth, worth considering if you can't afford the full price tickets. And the subway access is, is all... Yeah, it's a lot. It's a much longer subway ride, of course, because you're going all the way up to Bronx, but it's still fairly convenient. So again, from the from the Port Authority Times Square complex, you take the, you take the two train up to 180th Street, and then a four block walk through the, through the streets. This time, will get you to the to the pedestrian entrance to the zoo. So these are these are both pretty very good zoos, of course. Uh, their their animal collections are largely very different, so so go so going to both of them in the same summer is perfectly reasonable. They, I wouldn't try them in the same day. The Bronx Zoo is a little too big for that, but but on, se on se two separate days visiting both of those zoos, very reasonable plan. You you will see different animals in both settings. Well, for the most part, there's there's a couple notable species that are found in both collections, and the most interesting example of those will be today's featured animal. 
kingdom. Cornelia, of course, it's an animal. Phylum Cordata. Most zoo displays are going are going to be vertebrates. Uh, class Mammalia. We we're dealing with a with a mammal this time. We're all familiar with what mammals are, of course. Uh, animals that usually have fur, have, give feed feed their offspring on milk, and so forth. Order, order Carnivora is is all the really cool animals that get. The, the felines, the canines, the bears, <laughs> the the weasels. This this time our featured animal is family felidae. So we 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 have a feline. And genus Panthera is is worth mentioning. That's the, that's the taxonomic category that contain that contains all all the classic big cats: lions, leopards, jaguars. Tigers, but notably not including the North American panther, despite the name. North American panther is Puma concolor, which is actually more closely related to your house cat than it is to any of these guys. Today, today's spe speech animal is perhaps the least famous, but still pretty well known of the of the of the panther big cats. This Panthera uncia, the snow cat. Sorry, the snow leopard. Well, snow cat would be just as accurate because a snow leopard isn't really a leopard at all. It's called a leopard because it has spotted fur, but it's more it's more closely related to the tiger than to than to the leopard. And for that matter, the le the leopard uh, it, of of the other big cats, it's it's, it's closest relative is going to be the lion. <laughs> uh, no also notable about uh, the snow leopard as compared to the other p genus Panthera big cats, the snow leopard is the only one of them that does not roar. It can make it can make a pretty loud meowing type vocalization that that, that can take the place of a roar, roar for some functions, but it cannot actually roar the way the way that lions, leopards, tigers, and jaguars all can. Alright, so as, so as the big cats go, this is sort of a middling size one, two and a half to five feet long. That's body, head and body length. The, the t if you include the tail, you're, pu you're pretty close to doubling that. Uh, wh weight range is going to be 50 to 120 pounds. Uh, fe uh, as is common for most animals, females are going to be on the smaller end and males are going to be on the larger. So snow leopards, and in fact, all all the felines really are going to be pure carnivores. They're not going to they're not going to eat much of anything other than meat. And in the case of snow leopards, they're mostly hunting large game. So it's going to be various species of deer, sheep, goats, occasionally domestic sheep and goats, but more but more often various wild ones. And of course, those animals are about. Are about as big as big game gets in the snow leopard's habitat, which is, which is up in the mountains. So snow leopards are alpine specialists. They live they live in the tundra of the mount, of the various mountain ranges of Central Asia. So you look at the highlighted areas on the map. You, you know, at the bot at the bottom here, you've got the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau, and the, and then it hooks through the the various other mountain ranges. Of, of uh, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and Tajikistan, up into Siberia. <laughs> so, all all the mountains of that part of the world are going to, are going to be home territory for the snow leopard. And we're, since we're since we're looking at mountains of the as the home territory, humans don't don't live on mountains much. It's not that useful for us. Mountains make terrible farmland. So the biggest threat to these guys is going to be poaching rather than habitat loss. We're not we're not likely to pave over their homes anytime soon. Global warming, however, might be a potential issue because if you because as the climate gets warmer, you know the uh, the the uh, the uh, denser forest type terrain will 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 creep steadily further up the mountains and. Uh, 
and push, pushing back against the true alpine terrain, which is the preferred habitat for these guys. So global warming might, ca might cause some significant habitat loss for the snow leopard. But those are the two, the two, the only two major problems for these, for this species, and they're not all that dire. So the, the snow leopard is is merely listed as vulnerable by the IUCN. So vulner, vulnerable is the least bad of the endangered categories. So by comparison, our snow leopard's cousins, the tigers, are truly endangered. They're they're probably the most threatened of the big cats. All right, so there's, there's what we need to know about snow, about snow leopards. Beautiful, cool animals, even even if they're not really leopards. <laughs> so information sources, zoo information from the websites, centralparkzoo.com or bronxzoo.com. Visiting those websites is going to be important if you're going to go there because you have to buy tickets for these zoos on, online right now. They're, they're, not, they're not doing a... a admission tickets for cash at the gate and, and of course New York being much more crowded than New Jersey they're probably going to have a capacity limits uh, in effect long, for longer than we are uh, and animal information our usual sources the Wik Wikipedia pages on snow leopard and genus panthera in general and the IUCN page on the snow leopard Pictures are the Wikipedia contributors, and so, and so video licensing accordingly. So you might you might have noticed I did not have the opportunity to actually visit the zoo the zoos in person this time, basically, basically because of the rushing around with the schedule changes. So, so this so this one this. So this week's Larry's Furry was a doubly virtual episode with all, with all the information done from online. I'll try to I'll try to get it out to out to a, to a site in person to 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 do a, to do some live photography for my final Larry's Furry next next week on our last week of school. Until then, have a have a have a group. Have a great day, and if I, and if I don't see you much again, have a great summer, and bye for now.